Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Our white has never really been too exciting. We've splashed it a few times and we mained it in kind of the red white aggro deck, but yeah, these white cards are all kind of aggressively slanted cards, but aggro decks just don't come together very often. So I don't really like anything in white. Uh, in blue... Blue seems pretty bad as well. Does black have anything? Uh, black's a little bit better. We've got our cast down, Myers Grasp, Disfigure, lots of cheap removal. Bontu... Still nothing, like, amazing. And no bomb to really help us close. In red we've got uh, Outcasts, Siege Gang, Cavalier, Phoenix, so red's okay, but it's not very deep. So, wow, green on the other hand seems very deep. We've got Elves, Green Seeker, Karyatids, Once Upon a Time, Reclamation Sage, Questing Beast, Cavalier, Beanstalk. So green, green seems playable. Got a lot of lands for fixing. Do we actually have any multicolor spells we can cast? <laughs> no. Well, this this pool is pretty disappointing. We have very few bombs to actually help us close. Cure us fine. But, uh... Yeah, even here, I guess we've got, like, a Stonecoil Serpent. So maybe we have to kind of... Rely on Finale to end the game. We could go Gruul. We do have, I guess, a Zurta and a Burning Tree as well. And green being deep makes, I guess, for a good pairing with the red, which is good in quality, but pretty light in number of playables. So red-green is my first instinct. Uh, Black-green could work as well. I mean, Bontu is pretty good as a way to draw a couple cards in the late game and could be pretty aggressively slanted as well with a low curve. So let's take a look. Could even play Wildwood Tracker if I wanted to. Maybe even a Giant Growth. Don't think Evolution Sage does much for me. This seems fine. Not sure about Arasta. Once in future could also be cut. Kiora and Stone Coil will make the cuts. This doesn't seem exciting, but I guess it's a two drop. So this is the first look at red green. Um, it's not amazing. The finale is kind of awkward. I mean, it's playable. Don't think I'm playing Finale. Probably cut the Beanstalk Giants. I guess Beanstalk is nice with Outcasts. But that's about it. So we can kind of be red green aggro. Could maybe splash a third color. Do have a couple blue green dual lands. Anything in blue worth splashing? I guess there's like fairy formation, maybe chemisters, if I want some card draw. Yeah, this deck has basically zero removal, so that's not great. 
We've got a Crown War. Siege gank and pink stuff down. Could play Prey Upon. So that's an option. Alternatively, I can cut probably the reds to make room for black. Which has a bit more in the removal department. Could still be pretty aggressive. Although I don't have any mana fixing in black green. It's nothing in the artifacts that I love. Could always play a clockwork servant, I suppose. Do have a lot of one drops, a lot of two drops, so this is like a decent aggressive deck. Karyotids might be cuttable. The Witch's Vengeance could be cuttable too. Do have a little bit of synergy with the Imperius Perfect. All my one drops are elves, so the Imperius Perfect seems pretty good actually. Pontu to refuel, Cavalier, I mean it's just a big guy I guess. That plays well with Kyura. Kyura is also not amazing. It's good with Questing Beasts, Serpent, Cavalier and Bontu. How many enchantments for Ephemia? Plays well with Myers Grasp. Timurat, Bray Maggots. So I've got a couple. Yeah, all the red cards are pretty heavy commitments to red, so they're not particularly splashable. I could splash blue. But I think the only card I'm like excited to splash are Camsters and the Fairy Formation. And I haven't been too impressed with Fairy Formation, just because it's so slow to really get going. Although I would have like five dual lands to help me splash blue in this deck. So it wouldn't be difficult to do. Question is, is it worth it? Because this deck does want to curve out. So having as many untapped green sources on turn 1, and having black for Timurat can be pretty important, so I might not even want to d dilute the deck with a bunch of dual lands. We've got some cheap removal, which also kind of incentivizes us to be low to the ground. Giant growth plays well if we're trying to be aggressive. Got five one drops, most of which I don't mind playing turn one. Falmar Knight is fine if played later too. Some disruption with the Bray Maggots, bit of flying with Ephemia. I uh, don't think we have any knights to go with the Paragon that don't already have Death Touch. I guess the Cavalier of Thorns could gain Death Touch. Probably not too relevant. But then we've got kind of the Elf package, Reclamation Sage. Seems quite good. And then we've got Kiora, Once and Future as sources of card advantage, as well as Bontu, which is also better in a more low curve deck, I think. And Questing Beast can deliver the beatdowns. So this seems playable to me. Don't think Finale fits, don't have enough ramp. Beanstalk is a little slow, we're not really ramping in too much. Arastas, kind of whatever. Don't have enough counters for Revolution Sage. Karyotids can have its moments, but I think I prefer Green Seeker. And Prey Upon is, I guess, okay with some of my Death Touch creatures, but don't have many of them. And overall my creatures aren't enormous. So I think I can do without it. Could play Juggernaut as a creature that goes well with Kiora. But uh, does have drawbacks as well. Mindstone could be more ramp, but we're not really ramping into much. Could 
could definitely build a more rampy green version where we play Karyotids, Beanstalk, Finale, maybe Mindstone as well. I think the black here wants to be more proactive and more low to the ground. And then the mana base probably favors green slightly, so 9-8 seems fitting. Yeah, just gotta look for those aggressive openers. Because, I mean, some decks in this format tend to be pretty clunky, so we might be able to punish those. Although, if I had the choice, I would definitely choose for a more uh, powerful deck with a better late game. But just don't have that uh, option, I think, this time. Alright, I do have a Once Upon a Time to hopefully find something to play early. Don't have many forests for once in future. So this hand's actually kind of bad, but probably still better than a six card hand. Oh no, they've got uh, efficient removal. Think I'm just gonna wait on Serpents, play Cure on 3 and then 4-4 four, four Serpent to draw a card. Or maybe 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, it's gonna line up pretty well against these blue-white flyers. Alright, have some nice tools available for next turn. Hopefully no answer for Serpent, otherwise we're in trouble. They can protect with a Storm Tamer from cast down, so that's not super reliable. But, uh. Yeah, gotta attack Gideon before they can minus, and then I might use the Giant Growth. I think I'm still leaning Timurat plus Cast Down just to get rid of the Storm Tamer as opposed to trying to play Bontu because I might end up taking too much from the Flyers. And yeah, sadly I can't untap Stone Coil with Kiora since it's multicolor. Um, no real point in untapping the Forest, I guess. Alright, that will tap the opponent out. I 
think I just killed the eagle now. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because they're playing it, so this would gain flying, but we can prevent that from happening by killing their creature first. Life thrives. Alright, so we're not in a bad spot. And our opponent agrees. They had a nice start, but uh, Stonecoil Serpents, MVP this game. All right. Oh no. At least I've got two plays lined up for next turn. Probably takes Timurets since Paragon trades for Bray Maggots. They might say Kiora, but... Now, playing Paragon might still be the play, since then next turn I can go Kiora, untap a forest, play Tracker. Sadly, the Paragon is a human, but maybe we'll just uh, gobble up all these creatures to Bontu and draw some cards. Ariel. It's a scary card. Could like attack into it and Mars Grasp, hoping they block. I guess that's alright. And if they don't, I still go for the Bontu plan. They might be playing around dead weight or disfigure. No. Oh. Let 
So I can at least sack one forest. Do I just sack like a forest and a swamp? Kira can make mana. I've got a Lunar Elves coming up. And this could hit for two. Yeah. I'll draw lands. So the ice is probably on Bontu duty. Never mind. Let's get my Timurid back. Femia's not bad. So I can empty my hand here. No sweeper, please. At least if they wipe the board, I get my Bontu back. Yeah, so they can block the zombie. Take five down to seven. It's a questionable attack. Don't have any enchantments in the graveyard at the moment. Is it worth 5 damage? It might be. Sure. That's a fine draw. So move to combats. Timurets. I mean, they might tap down Timurets and then does a Femia attack. Um, sure, Tracker can attack and then just play 4, 5, 6, 6 Serpents. Nah, I guess I'll keep a female back for now. So now they have to tap down the serpents, and then Timurit can start attacking. If Timurit trades, we get a zombie. Still gonna be an uphill battle, but I've got some good top decks. That's potentially a scary card too. Hello there. Could also Sage the Trapped in a Tower. Maybe that was better, but... I think killing Icy is also reasonable. What does this do again? 
Yeah, I don't think I care too much about Bloodfast. Do we play around Settle the Wreckage? Opponent didn't do anything in their turn. Like, let's say I just send Stone Coil and Beast, what happens? I could just send the Serpents. Although if it's just a seal away, I'm gonna be sad. I am giving them an extra turn, which I don't love. They can use Bloodfast again. Maybe Stone Cold plus Ephemia split the difference. I don't know. Alright, so they did have a spot removal spell instead. Sure. Nah, this is starting to slip away now. Yeah, playing around settles definitely has a big cost attached. But you do feel silly if you walk into it. Now they can start using the Bloodfast again. Yeah, drawing Brain Maggot would have been nice. Just to kind of check for a settle. Upkeep use Green Seeker to maximize the chances of drawing a spell. Can kill them here, right? Can put them to one. Just kill Josu then. Well, this has been an interesting game at least. Did just cut myself off double green. Haha, <laughs> they couldn't cast down Timurat, that's funny. Still behind, but opponents at 4 were at 25, so we've got more time to maybe draw out of it. They're deciding if they want to flip the Bloodfasts.
Opponent down to two. Now, do I even want to use Green Seekers? So they've got this, which can tap down Timurets. Even if I draw a removal for the Enforcer, they could still tap a creature down, and I would only get in for one. So I think I do still green seek. I should probably play the forests because I do have some double and triple green cards in the deck that I might not be able to play if I play the swamp, even though I just give them more information. Yeah, this is tough. We're getting beat down pretty quickly by the Giants. Bloodfast is probably going to transform, which gives him access to more life. I might, let's see, do I have ways to get back creatures? I guess I have once and future. So I don't think I'm exiling anything. Yeah, there it is. So I can get back Reclamation Sage, Stone Coil. Yeah, so two cards. So probably a Rex Sage and Stone Coil. And then I want to just play with Adamant, but then I can't Sage this turn, or I could not Adamant, so I can play Sage this turn, which. What does that do for me? This can tap down Stone Coil, so that's good. So yeah, I think I'm just going to end of turn it then and play huge stone coil. Questing beast would just get tapped by the enforcer so it doesn't do a whole lot. Opponent still has the temple, so we're definitely not killing them. But uh, I guess now I can exile Femia. Probably take my draw step. So can play a large stone coil. Kind of need it to be an 8-8. So that doesn't leave enough mana for a reclamation sage this turn. If I sage the tribunal, then they use enforcer to tap down the beasts. I would be able to attack with the rests. 
they would eat my, let's say, Timoret, and then sack and force her to gain two, so they wouldn't be dead. Yeah, let's just play a massive serpent and then hope that's good enough. I guess x equals nine. Yeah, if they don't have removal for, for Serpent, we should be in a clear, since they can't tap it down. Enforcer looks at mana cost, and this is mana cost zero. Now it's probably fine to Rex Sage the Tribunal instead of the Weather Lights. Yeah, destroying the Trapped in the Tower was also an option. This play lets me put an extra counter on Pelt Collector, which might be relevant, so not sure which is better. Interesting, they're not tapping the Questing Beasts. So they can... They can potentially gain 7 here with the Temple up to 9. Let's say they block here, still tramples for 4, so they would be dead. I'm not gonna play around Settle a second time here. Or am I? <laughs> uh. If they have a spot removal spell, maybe they survive. So they should be dead. Alright. We gave them the benefit of the doubt. Probably could have won had we committed couple turns ago, but hey, you know what, we got to play a longer game, so value, I guess. Once upon a time for a forest, gotta believe. Turn three questing beasts, sounds good. Don't hate Bray Maggot turn two. Turn one elves turn two Bray Maggot turn three Questing Beast or I can go for Imperius Perfect turn two, which is pretty solid as well. I think the disruption elements might end up being more important. So I've got a counter spell that they currently can't cast. A ram spell that I'm fine if they want to play. I think I just take their only creature here. Although I guess I have a cast down to kill this. Hmm. Maybe I do take the counter spell on the off chance that they draw an islands. They're probably going to grow from the ashes into Keeper. I'm going to Questing Beast into Cast Town, which lines up quite well.
All right, that was a fast one. Yeah, you don't always need the six mana bombs to win the game. Sometimes a little bit of disruption and a good curve goes a long way. Hopefully don't draw too many lands, but uh, nice aggressive starts backed up with a removal spell. Knight's a good target for this figure. That also works. Just gonna pass, probably draw cards, but if they move in on the Knight of Evil Legion, I can maybe interact with it. I guess we let go of the Pelt Collector. It's kind of close. Could definitely draw another large creature and prefer the Pelt Collector in play. I maybe should have drawn a card first to help me decide. Like if I draw Questing Beasts, I probably would have preferred the Pelt Collector. Strider. Let's disfigure the knights while we can. That's <laughs> big stone coil time. So, what am I doing here? If the Butcher dies, then Ephemia dies, but the Ghost Rider means they can sack it at any time. So I can't really prevent it from happening. Yeah, I guess we just attack. Let's see what they do. And then Rexage as a 2-1 could be worth it. I think I hold it. They've already played their Angrass Rampage. So they should be dead now. Stone Coil Serpent claims another victim. And our mediocre Golgari deck already made it to four wins. Mm, don't think this will do. This I can keep. Probably get rid of the giant growth. Take an elf. Once Upon a Time has also been pretty good in our opening hands. I 
Red, black, but there's no red. They kept the greedy one. Guess we'll take the only card they can cast at the moment. Oh yes. I guess I'll Cavalier this turn. This was quite a curve. Turn 1 Lunar Elves doing work. Got the clean 5-0 with a pretty average looking Golgari deck. Sweet. Dead Eye Tracker could be a useful sideboard card in the Asper Humans deck, so not completely useless. And Journey to Eternity. I'm surprised I didn't have the full playset. I guess I built a lot of Journey decks before the account wipe back in the uh, alpha stages. But uh, yeah, want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.